Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Workers and Resources, where today we're going to be engaging in some international trade to print money. Oh, it's going to be wonderful because now we have boats. We could have had boats a long time ago, and I could have been doing this a long time ago, but it requires a substantial upfront investment to really get this ramped up. And I wanted to make sure I had enough money to invest before I ramped it up. We're going to pause it here and because uh, I want the frame rates and stuff. This ship is moving to this port so that it can uh uh yeah it can grab these mechanical components and we're going to send these mechanical components over to the west i've decided the mechanical components are going to the west it's going to give us a little bit of a start on our dollars okay just a little bit of a dollar start a little bit of a dollar headway here um i've also there's not enough um th the fuel won't work for this i don't know why it's complaining. Both of these are complaining. Uh, I, ass I assume this one's going to complain too, but uh, this one was complaining and uh, and this one it was complaining. And I, I don't understand exactly why, but apparently you need a pump between these tanks and the, the, the port here. Apparently you need to pump to take this and push it into this. Now, the reason why I didn't think you needed that was because this one works. Very inconsistent. And I have no idea why this works and it this medium cargo harbor this industrial cargo harbor medium it is the exact same building as this uh directly piped into this the only difference i can think of for any of this is because this is an above ground pipe and the other ones are underground pipes and maybe the underground pipe needs a pump i have no idea but i was able to take this fuel supply and have it come into here just fine when this boat did its thing maybe i'm wrong and maybe uh the maybe these guys are bringing fuel to this i don't believe they are i didn't set it up that way i have no idea why this one's working and the other one is not but this one is a uh, a cargo ship with a whole bunch of steel and this is going to send it to the the east instead we're sending this to the soviets because you get so much more rubles for this then you do dollars and the ratio here that's what we're going to be talking about a lot today we're going to be running numbers today uh and i'm going to be showing you what my trade is going to be to make the most money i can uh with the funds that i currently have to invest you can do a lot more of this if you have more money by all means you can make and do this more and i will eventually ramp this up as i make more money i can ramp this up uh to make it even even better but uh to start the process of making money with international trade you don't need any infrastructure as long as you have a river that takes you that takes you have a river that goes from the east to the west right uh, effectively on the map here right if you have a river that runs from the eastern block to the western block right which is this river right here for us then you can do this as long as you have boats and you can start at small scale and you can work your way up and until you have big boats that work at big scale you're probably going to be spending a lot on fuel and you're probably going to be spending quite a bit on repairs and such that are going to eat into your profits a significant amount. But if you have bigger boats like I'm about to have today, you can do a lot before you have to have any expenditures that way. So uh, let's talk about what our trade's going to be. We're going to come over to the economy and trade screen and check the current prices in the market. It's going to show buy and sell for both rubles and dollars, which is this, another way of saying the buying and selling for the Eastern Bloc, Soviet uh, countries, and the buying and selling for the Western Bloc, uh, the uh, NATO countries, right, are right over here. So what you want to find when you're going to spend your rubles, because pretty much 99.99% of all players that play this game will have more rubles in their bank account than they do dollars, okay? Because... We are in, that, that's the whole nature of the game we have more rubles the ruble is, is more useful to us and there's also more available to us uh with rubles so for example let me show you why if i click to buy ships uh from the americans with dollars right from the nato countries with dollars i have five options total not filtered five options total to where i have a lot more options another page even with this uh and that's great and and this is the way it is for all vehicles and such in the game too all the different vehicles and stuff are this way as well now we could also look into purchasing used 
stuff as well. We could save a little bit of cash on it, maybe. But from my experience so far, you don't save much. For example, this Type 587 Los is great. And this is one of the boats I'm going to buy today. Uh, it has 45% wear and tear and it's five years old. It's going to cost me 10.2 million rubles. Or I could buy it brand new. Let's buy cargo ships here. If I buy it brand new, uh, right here, 10.9 million rubles. Might as well buy it brand new, right? Instead of one that's already going to need repaired pretty soon at 45%, five years old. No, thanks. Might as well buy it new. Okay. So here's the trade. Here's how we're going to work with this trade. Uh, go back over to the economy and trade screen. Okay. What we want to find is the right ratio from rubles and dollars. Okay. We want to find something that we can buy for rubles and sell for as close to a one-to-one -one trade with dollars as possible, and then buy something with dollars and sell it with the Soviets for as skewed of a, re uh, of a, of a trade as possible, right? We want like to make six or seven times the number of rubles than dollars, okay? And that's how we're gonna make our money because what we really are doing when we're doing this is we're trying to make as many rubles as possible, not dollars, okay? You can do it the other way around if you want, it works in reverse too, but rubles are significantly more valuable to me. So I'm going to use those to me in my Republic and how I'm buying things. And the fact that I have everything is rubles where I am. That's what I'm going to be doing. So how are we going to do that trade? We want to look at the buy column and the sell column right here in the middle. What we're going to try to find is the, what is the closest ratio to a one to one ratio. So for example, crops is 4351 and 3099 and 3100 right that's not close to one it's closer than some things like clothes for example which is going to be buying it for 82.8 and then selling it for 31.2 that's horrible we want something that's as close to a one-to-one -one as we can get these prices are changed for all of your games right these are a dynamic as a dynamic market depends on what you buy and sell depends on how you trade and what things that you're buying at the border and such right by and large, generally, they should be relatively close to the same. But the numbers themselves will be different in your game. So in my game, oil is the best thing I can buy from the Soviets. Now, I'm producing it myself, but I don't want to influence my entire... Like, my local production and my local consumption remains unchanged with this plan. The entire thing I'm adding requires no infrastructure whatsoever other than refueling. Okay, I'm probably going to have to add a port over here or something for these boats to refuel so they don't have to come all the way down here and do it, but that's okay. Um, the, the point is, though, here is th the only thing I'm adding to the entire Republic in this case are boats, the travelings up and down the river, and that's it. They don't even need to come in here until they refuel, okay? So relatively low cost in that way. The biggest cost up front is the boats, and then ongoing cost is just simply what we're buying for rubles. But only all that matters is that once this trade is completed, we make a lot more rubles at the end of it than we spent going into it. And that's where this ratio matters. So I'm going to, I'm going to buy oil from the Soviets all the way over there. I could buy it over here too. I could buy it on a train and bring it in here. That would be, that would speed up the process. But as you'll see soon, I don't care to speed up the process on the oil. I would love to speed up the process on the other side, but I don't need, I don't need to speed up the process on the oil. Okay. If I did speed up the process on the oil, I could use a smaller boat. So perhaps there's that, but I don't need to, you'll see. So, uh, I have enough trains on my rails as is we're going to, we're going to buy this. And that means we need an oil tanker. The next thing we want to do is we want to find the most skewed possible ratio we can come up with on the other side. What can we buy for, for dollars and sell for rubles at the, the most skewed ratio we have. Okay. And what I'm seeing is there's actually a few winners here and all of them are aggregate. It's strange, right? Aggregate stuff is best. We could buy quarried stone, for example, for 1353 per ton and sell it for 94 per ton. Okay. That's like almost seven times your money right there. All right. And in a perfect world, we could find that product and we could take one boat that does the oil and one boat that does the aggregate and they could just go up and down the river making us cash, right? But 
Unfortunately, this isn't a perfect world in that situation because there are limitations to what boats can do. So, for example, if we look at the highest end of this, which we're not going to do because I can't afford it, uh, but the highest end of this is the Pride, the tanker here, that can do 19,250 tons of oil. Now, alternatively, if I had the money, if I had the cash, uh, the dollars, I could actually go over to the West because they have tankers that are even better. They have the Baltic tanker and the Vicky tanker. And both of these handle a lot. We would choose the Vicky in this case. Uh, the Baltic has the advantage on speed and it does 23,250 tons of oil. The Vicky is a little slower, but can do an extra 2,000 tons. So crazy, 25,000 tons of oil. It's crazy. But the problem with these, um, it, it really even the problem with choosing, you know, the pride is that that amount of oil buying it from the Soviets and sending it over to the, uh, the other side of the border, right? Doing that as great as that is, I'm going to end up with like $24 million on the other end. I have to be able to spend $24 million and get the rubles back before this thing buys more oil. Okay. Like I could do one trip and then like, I mean, have this boat make one trip every two years. Sure. That's good. But might as well have a smaller boat. Right. And then have it and just not have to deal with it. Um, and that's ultimately where I'm going with it until I can scale it up. Um, so if I, if I had $24 million, for example, that is going to lead me to buy almost 1.8 million tons of quarried stone. How do I move 1.8 million tons of quarried stone? The biggest boat for aggregate is this one in the whole game. This is the biggest boat for aggregate, unless you mod it. And it only does 85 to, uh, or 8,250 tons of quarried stone. This thing's going to have to take, uh, I, I'm going to need 40 of these things <laughs> to move that much, that much gravel, right? I, I can't do that. What I can do though, is try to find what product has a similar ratio, but costs more money because on the other end of it, I'll make even more money. And so when that happens, I can go over to bauxite. Bauxite is a great ratio here. It's uh, a little over six times my cash. Uh, 6.4, I think is what it was on my calculations here. Currently on the current market prices. Anyway, I buy it for 175 per ton and I sell it for over 1200 per ton on the other side. That's crazy. And it's a really good trade because it means that if I can somehow, and I, I won't be doing both of these boats, what I might be able to get away with, and I don't have the cash to do so is having one of the pride and maybe three of the other ore carriers that would maybe help. But let's just say, for example, right? If I was to sell 19,250 tons of oil, all right, let's, let's actually do the math on this. If I was to sell, uh, first off buying this much oil, how much was that? It does even cost to buy this much oil. It's like 30 million, isn't it? I'd have to buy it for 1608, uh, 92 per ton. So that's almost 31 million rubles worth of oil. Okay. That's a lot of oil. I take the 31 million, uh, rubles worth of oil and I, s I sell it to the, to the West. Okay. And by doing that, 19 to 50, uh, I will sell this amount of oil to, uh, convert that for, to dollars, uh, on this side for 12, 37, 17, which equals almost $24 million. That's about what I said, right? $24 million. So $24 million. Now I have to spend $24 million. I have to spend it on something, right? What am I spending it on? Well, let's spend it on bauxite. It's a pretty good, that's a pretty good ratio there. So I spend it on bauxite at one, 174, 69 units. Uh, so that gives me, uh, over 136,000 tons of bauxite. 136,000 tons, you guys, of bauxite. To in order, in order to move that much bauxite at the same speed this thing is moving oil, I would need 17 of these ore, ore carriers. That's a lot. I don't have the money for 17 of these ore carriers. 
So the trick is going to be finding the right ratio. What's the right ratio in which I can, I can sell it at the same pace that I buy oil on the other side and maybe still have some dollars left over. So for that, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to buy two of these ore carriers. One, two. Oh my God, we spent money, didn't we? Oh boy. <laughs> yep, we're going to buy two of these ore carriers and we're going to buy instead the type 587 Los, all right? And that, that's going to that's gonna transport 2770 tons of oil. So let's run the math on that and see why that's a good ratio for me to work with this trade right now. First off, it's 11 million rubles to buy this boat. We'll go ahead and buy this and I'll let the time run so they have a chance to get here. So that's more money than I've ever spent in the game in one month. <laughs> Hi. Hi there, 128 million ruble bill. <laughs> wow, we imported over 130 million rubles worth of vehicles this month. That's pretty wild. So let's take a look at this trade. 2770 tons of oil. How much does that cost me? Right? How long until these boats pay for themselves, basically, right? 2770 tons of oil at the price of 1608. 92 is going to run me 4.456 million. So let's just round it and say 4.5 million because the price as I buy oil is going to keep going up, right? So let's just say on average, it cost me four and a half million. Okay. Real easy way to round that up. I don't want to have to deal with trains while I'm explaining this. Uh, four and a half million. Okay. I'm going to pause it so I don't have to deal with the trains. So how much rubles do we get on the other side of the trade, right? Well, we need to take four and a half million rubles and convert it to dollars. So 2770 units of oil is going to get us on the other side, 3.4 million dollars on the other side. Okay. So 3.4 million dollars. How much bauxite does 3.4 million dollars get me, right? So I'm just going to take the number that I got here. It's 3.425 or 26, whatever. It doesn't matter. The price is going to adjust as I buy it anyway. It's all that matters is that we have a ballpark figure. All right. So on the other side, that gets me enough to have 19.6 thousand tons of bauxite. 19.6 thousand tons. With two of these ships, I can move 16,500 tons at a time right? This means that on the trade, because they're both of these, all these ships are making the same route, but these two ships are traveling at 11 knots. And this trip, this ship is traveling at eight knots. So these ships are going to be able to move a little bit faster than the oil train, the oil ship, right? And because of that, they're going to be able to move a, just a little bit more than that ratio, which is good because I can buy with this 19,617 but I can only move 16 and a half per trip. So there's that extra like 3,500, 3,000 units, right? Basically of bauxite extra on the tail end of that. And that's the little difference that we're going to be able to move with having both of these boats moving faster. Okay. So that's going to get me. So what does that get me? 19,617 units of bauxite. What does that get me on the other side? Well, I sell each unit for 1208. All right, so that gets me 24 million rubles. I spent four and a half million rubles. And at the end of the trade, I have 24 million rubles, 20, 23 and a half million rubles. That's a significant profit. And I do that with having three ships and they don't even engage. They don't even, uh, you know, they don't even mess with my own infrastructure. They change nothing about how my economy is running. They change nothing about how all of this works. And I have enough uh, rubles at the end of the trade to have a good cushion in case, you know, we end up buying extra oil when we don't need to or whatever. And best of all, I'm going to have these, sh these ships are going to be going wait till loaded. And so if they end up arriving over here and we haven't quite sold the oil on the other side yet, well, then they'll just wait. And then they'll come back. I don't actually know if you can do wait until loaded actually on the... I don't think that's possible to do wait till loaded on... Uh, yep, you can. You wait till loaded. Okay, cool. So you can wait till unloaded, wait till loaded, etc. Uh, on there. 
uh and which means as soon as they try to buy the bauxite on this side if i run out of money if i run out of dollars poof gone dollars gone they're just gonna sit there until they're loaded and that's great i won't run out of rubles but uh you know the, the bauxite on the other end is probably what will end up uh will end up happening because the rubles profit is so high that i'm making when one trip i'm gonna make enough for that boat to do an extra five trips right so i'm never gonna run out of rubles in this trade but i might run out of dollars in this trade which is fine because the whole goal of the trade is to make more rubles all right so that's how we're going to use international trade to our advantage now of course the price is going to change as we do this as we buy certain things and sell certain things uh everything changes and uh what we end up with ultimately is uh not as good of a trade uh, over time so like 10 years from now we might have to adjust this trade which is fine because there are other products out here that have similar ratios right like we could do it's not as great because we can't use as many it's all about tonnage right you have to be able to move as much tonnage so find things that are really expensive on the aggregate end and have a similar ratio so bauxite being one of those things but I could just as easily move something like say aluminum scrap that's 2214 that's huge but you sell it for 11 11.2 11 it's about like, that's like a four and a half ratio it's not great but you're still making four and a half times your money right it's that's that's a big deal right or you can go aluminum oxide it's, you buy it for under under two million uh dollars per ton but you sell it for over nine and a half million per ton that's pretty good so you just alter as long as what you're shipping over here is aggregate which I don't think aluminum oxide is let's go like this so aluminum oxide is not an option unless it's just hidden there it's kind of cut off but I'm pretty sure that's just aluminum scraps not aluminum oxide um so but we could still use the aluminum right it's a very expensive item we want to be able to spend a lot uh over there so as we get more and more dollars and we ramp up and we start seeing these ships moving things we could shift to using the pride and get like 24 million and then as long as we're spending all 24 million of those dollars we get just we just scale it up right so i think you get it it's gonna be great um i think it's gonna be wonderful so we're gonna start by having just like look at this look at this ratio here right we're we're basically getting 187 thousand dollars instead of 1.1 million rubles it's not a great trade it's really not great but I want some dollars I need to I need to have some dollars so that I can uh start building this out and so I am gonna let this go just because we're already sending the steel over the other way okay so this video is all about the trade and we want to see what that's like so I'm gonna let it run for a little while we still got some more construction and stuff to do right we're still waiting for them to get all this stuff done and so uh I'm gonna let them run that and uh you know we'll probably cut you in when we start getting the boats here and stuff it's gonna be fun okay so the boats are all in my border now but I uh, decided to stop the oil tanker and start that route right now because they're coming from the Soviet side so there's no reason for this tanker to go all the way over to the middle of my Republic just to have to come all the way back here to start its route so I'm gonna have it go ahead and it's gonna load uh hold on it's gonna load uh right here yep right there it is so it's gonna load uh from the Soviet side 100 percent of oil it's gonna give me 2770 tons of oil that's gonna cost me another I guess four and a half million right so we're gonna start spending that too uh and then these boats which are super pretty look at these boats this this boat is awesome look at that boat look at that boat that's awesome oh hey there a hey, steel boat okay so they're running into each other I'm wondering if I I don't know how that works like why don't they just go around each other I bet I have probably have to set up buoys right I bet it probably takes buoys is that boat moving backwards I thought it was like I don't know the current from the bigger boat is moving it or something but yeah there's the there's our steel barge if you will it's going out that way all right uh, and of course I just I'm purchasing I think I am anyway my, my exports are freaking dominant this month look at that hold on what's my exports like what, what is this is this that's the bitumen right yeah yeah we finally finally got caught up with that sweet so now we're gonna start making the money back right um okay so yeah those boats are gonna come uh this way and uh and then we'll send them over to get the gravel but we can't do that until we have dollars 
You have to have the dollars before we can get, not gravel, uh, the, the bauxite, right? You're getting fuel delivered here. Right now, it's just being delivered directly from this, this distribution office. Because like I said, the, the, they're not letting it happen, and I don't know why. So I'm tearing it out, and I just did. Uh, they're almost, it's almost torn out now. It's just a little bit more mixed waste. And then I'm going to plop in a, uh, a pump here. I, I don't know why it needs a pump. Um, and it, it makes sense. Don't get me wrong. It makes sense to need a pump. But this one didn't. And that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. Is like it's not consistent. Um, so maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe it is the underground thing, like, like we said earlier. Um, either way, though, we're going to use an underground pumping station here. And uh, we'll just go like this. And I'll just, I'll just put this like right here, I think. This is fine for me. There we go. So when this pipe is gone, we'll just connect this to this and then this out to there. Everything will be crazy. Everything will be great. All right. Cool. What are you confused by? I, I, I don't get it. Like, why? So you came in on this side. That's why you came in from this side. And now you're like, I can't leave. So you're just being dumb is what you're saying. But either way, if this was done, we'd be able to leave. So I'm not sure why that rail never got completed. Is there a reason for that or did you just not auto search it is, i mean i did take auto search away maybe that's the the very moment that i took auto search away is maybe that's when that happened so let's get the rail office to on that and then we don't have to deal with that anymore all right sweet so i'm gonna wait for those boats to come in uh i just want to see them again they're they're pretty fast these big ones are pretty fast this is the first one the other one is further up the river a little bit right these ones move faster than that oil barge too or than the oil Oh, there we go. We're buying it right now. Yep, that's us buying oil right there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. It's filling up. Where is that? For my uh, import. There's that oil ship right there. About four and a half million rubles worth, right? So we know that, 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 we know that expense is coming. <laughs> We're ready for it. This is the most expensive month in my entire Republic's history. I just spent 130 million rubles. I told you I didn't have much money. <laughs> I told you. As soon as you start doing ships and stuff, that's like, you got to have a lot. But it's okay, because this is going to make us net. We're going to be net positive on this. And then eventually, that will finance the airport. And then that will finance, you know, other republics around wherever. But the airport's not going to finance anything. An airport's going to be a net negative on our finances probably forever. But... Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe tourism will be, will be worth it. I don't know. I'm not really interested in tourism right now because historically it's been a really underwhelming uh, source of money. Like you can make ongoing money with it, but it's not that it's not that great. Uh, so notice here, I wanted to take a look at this too. Notice that the steel, right? It went out that way, and now we're I think we're selling steel now. I think that's what that is. Oh boy, <laughs> hang on. Uh huh. Yep. There's the sale of steel happening right now. Right before your very eyes. Should be about seven and a half million rubles worth of steel. So we're going to see the money going crazy now. Uh, maybe not on both sides, but we'll definitely start seeing an income on this side now. Uh, but this, this, this figure here is going to be going crazy for a little while. We went from having 130 million rubles worth of expenses last month to being profitable by many, many months. So our, yeah, the budget's really screwed. <laughs> Who knows what we're actually making now? It's gonna get worse. We're gonna be we're gonna be doing this here too. Uh, real quick, let me just check things uh, around the Republic here, making sure that all the heat is on. Uh, we should have heat. This building doesn't have drinking water, but it still produces heat. That's the important thing. Uh, it's also slowly accumulating waste because I didn't do waste over here. God, I didn't care enough to do waste over here. Let's just give them something, huh? We'll give them like this little. Give them that little thing there. All right, and they can shut up about it. There you go. A little bit of waste. You can have uh, Magnetograd come out here and do this. Uh, come out here and do the parking lot too. And then that'll take care of the uh, workers on an ongoing basis there. Um, you got this. We're going to tell them that we prefer uh, basic or higher on that. That's fine. Uh, the other one's not done yet. This one's not done yet because of this not being done. That's fine. And I can add a couple cars here, but I'm going to wait till they have more buildings. So this one has citizens. And those citizens are unable to visit a pub or tavern and a police of spirituality. But that doesn't matter because we're not giving it to them anyway. I could do like an alcohol kiosk or something, but I wasn't planning on giving it to them much anyway. I 
think this, uh, we could deliver alcohol here, but I don't know if it's really worth it. It's probably more worth it to just sell the alcohol, right? Uh, what they don't have is really good health coverage. Uh, we do have ambulances that can get here, but in the wintertime, that might be a little tough. Uh, they do have some culture right here. Although the waste areas are not built yet as, uh, and there is actually is a walking path to this. Okay, cool. They can't get there very easily because this isn't done, but they can go around. Well, that's fine. Yeah, and then getting a place to work is going to be a problem as well. But the hope is that these guys will navigate to construction sites as a job. And that, that's, I think, what's happening right now. So we should see the these buildings get finished a lot faster because of that. Because they'll have the local labor source right there. Man, this road is taking forever. They just are not prioritizing this. They're just not prioritizing it. Even though it's high. Oh, well. Just needs time. Everything takes time. Uh, yep. There's the ship coming into the port. Oh, boy. Now, of course, we can't send you on your way until we see... Uh, and actually, does the ship refuel at the border? I, I forget. Do they actually refuel at the border? Where's my oil ship? And it's not, it's just not back yet. Either that or I missed it. Or I'm at the wrong. Uh, maybe it's over here. Ah, there it is. I'm at the wrong side. Uh, so, yeah, you, you do have some fuel. That's interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know if you're going to complete. This is the, this is a steel ship anyway. Where's my oil ship? Wait, 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 wait. Where's the oil ship? Oil ship should be... And I can't find it unless it's on the map either. Because, like, how do I even... How do you search for the ship that has a route between two borders? I guess you go to the border, right? But then there's there's no customs house for this because it's the water. So, uh, you have to go to the list of vehicles. That's how you do it. And, uh... Yeah, I'm going to go to... I guess all the way over here on this side there we go this is my ship nope that's the the steel one all map here we go this yeah you don't have any fuel yeah you spent this but look at the look at the ratio here right you can actually sell this oil like that's almost one to one i mean this is the buy price right but you can almost that's, that's almost one-to-one -one guys right there so that's really nice you know that's what i'm talking about that's what we want to see oh look at this majestic this majestic ship pulling into port pulling into this i love it now it's, it's out of fuel right it's got to have fuel uh so this one right we're gonna send it to the western countries and the western countries you're going to load bauxite so you're 100 full and then you will go to the new stop at Soviet countries and you will sell. Oh, hang on. Why are you changing that? That's what happened last time, didn't it? Yep. Load bauxite. Unload the bauxite. There you go. That's your route. Yeah. And you'll do that. But of course, we can't do that until we actually get the sale. Uh, we have we have to see that go all the way over. I'm gonna wait till it gets maybe to this part here, and then I'll send them right. Because there's gonna be a little overlap there because these boats are a little bit faster. But for the most part, we want them to kind of go right alongside it. So two big old ore carriers. Oh yeah, building those boats ourselves would have taken a lot of resources and time. And also, I have to buy the license and the license costs significantly more than one boat you have to pay way over the price of a boat to get a license to build that boat so uh <laughs> i probably couldn't afford the license i don't know what the license would be i have to go to an actual shipyard uh where you build boats which i don't have one of those laid in here uh, i could put them here i also could put them on this side um this would probably be an easier a better place to do it since there's more room for storages and stuff here so i probably would be building boats here um but yeah like it, it costs a lot so I, I, I can't really show you that right now because you have to have one of these manufacturing buildings completed 
Oh, speaking of which, wow, there is only 191 workdays until this is done, and I am not ready for this yet. We are going to pause that. Oh, boy, did I ever get that just in time. We're going to pause that, but that building looks very close to complete now, doesn't it? Boy, doesn't that look nice. It's just, it's all the resources are delivered, so we could technically make vehicles uh, as soon as it's done, I think, because the storage that it pulls into is here. We have electrical components, mechanical, plastic, electronics. We don't have any fabric being delivered here. The fabric has to come uh, in from this side, and there is a little bit here, so I would have to uh, basically tell these guys to send fabric here. Um, so what I guess I could do is maybe alter what they're doing. Um, this warehouse, is it warehouse three? I think it's warehouse three. I'm going to rename the warehouse so I know which one it is. So this, this is the warehouse. This is the, um, Orasna, uh, yeah, Indush. I'm just going to call it the vehicle. Yeah. Vehicle man storage <laughs> vehicle manufacturing storage all right uh and then that we want you to uh, see i said unload fabric but it, they're not doing it and i think it's because of the percentage limitation on the other storage this other warehouse that's over there so this warehouse here which is just the industrial yard warehouse this has not receiving fabric oh you're not you're told not to load fabric here that's why okay do that and then and then i immediately copy that to the other ones so now they'll actually load the fabric here and they should be sending it down here and then at that point yeah i mean we're kind of ready aren't we we have direct access steel right here hooked up we could make our own cars right now but we just don't have the people i gotta have this up and running and have jobs for them so they're gonna kind of come up at the same time but uh, would be good to have this done just so there's a place for those vehicles to go to get shipped out. And then let's also get the parking lots done and the road. Okay, stop. Pause. Frame rates are terrible. Let's have this happen. And then, yeah, I really need this up and running so that we can get people in there. But we're very close to having that. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I don't see my dollars up yet. So I don't see. That's my steel boat coming right back in. So let's see how fast that worked. So you just dropped off a full load of steel. You're going to come in here. You have no fuel. All right. You have no fuel. Um, and then there's this tank that's right here. I mean, I assume it just the boat pulls it in. The boat acts as the pump, but that's not the case, I guess. Maybe some boats do and some boats don't. I don't know. Well, let's see if this changes at all, because I don't have a pump between these two things. And this thing just it filled right up right i mean granted there is fuel in here and so i think it's because there's been trucks and stuff that have brought it in here so i may i may actually need to have a pump after all i have to basically take the uh the pipe from here i'm not gonna i'm not gonna disconnect it or anything um but that i'll just yeah i probably will disconnect it and i'll take the the stuff away i'll use it as a loading source for the fuel rats that are in this area the load from here and then once this is empty i'll tear it out put a pump here instead and then put these pipe uh, those tanks i'll put that like over here or something that way they can refuel it much quicker and i could just pump it over there so it'll be a little more expensive but it'll be worth it because steel so we already had over 600 tons of steel ready to go for this boat before it got back so i think that's pretty good especially considering you know that's not even remotely close to our final form as far as like workload we definitely have more workers so um i'm thinking yeah we can definitely uh use that boat and, and make a lot of cash that way uh, but but i really oh hang on i see it right there we just made money we made dollars two hundred and eight thousand dollars that's it two hundred and eight thousand dollars should have made more than that wait a minute should have made a lot more than that what happened? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not the oil. I thought that was the oil and I'm getting very disappointed very fast. No, no, that's the mechanical components. We had a little bit of dollars because of the mechanical components. Okay. Whew. 
I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not how that was supposed to go. Wait, that's not worth it at all, is it? Okay, so we're selling oil to the west. And that's happening. Uh, something strange just happened, though. Um, somehow that boat just did that, and I didn't see it come back. I must I've been looking all over the, the, the area here trying to find it, and I didn't see it come back. If I go to the list of vehicles and the ships throughout the map, and I try to find this, as you can see, it's selling it right now. It zooms me all the way over here. Um, so obviously it's not showing me exactly where it is, but it, it's, it's apparently doing this. The boat is going from this border here to this border here. And it's, it's doing this. <laughs> um, that, that's, that's a bit fast. <laughs> I'm not sure how to, how to feel about that. Um, I'm worried and also excited of the prospect that it potentially the other boats will choose to do this as well. Uh, and we will just make a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it, it, it apparently has decided to do that. Which, to be fair, if you're going to buy it from the from the east and sell to the west, this is the shortest route. <laughs> but that's not at all what I thought it was going to do. And I feel like, for the sake of fairness, I really should, like, go in and cheat. All right, maybe you guys will be a, 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 not opposed to me cheating here. But I, I probably should, you know, fill that in so that this boat can't just, like, phantom hop between these two things. Uh, because it doesn't have any fuel, and it's able to go back and forth because it doesn't actually come back on my map anymore. So that's a little strange. Uh, it's just able to do it. Okay, so I can't actually stop this very easily uh, because I could fill this in, but it, the boat's just going to keep going around. Right? That's what it is. If there's any water, basically, that breaks this plane and this plane, right? So think of this as a cross. If there's any water in these two tiles, it's just going to keep doing that. So, which is great uh, for me. Yay. But that's not what I want. So, uh, I wanted to use the river. I think it's the only fair way to do it. So I could break realistic mode and then, you know, push this in with, with rubles, pay rubles to fill this in. It's going to cost me like 10 million rubles to do that. It's very expensive. It's very, uh, uh, very deep water. Um, but there's a better way to do this. And, uh, I'm going to do this instead. Uh, I'm going to tell it that it can't use that by implementing buoys. I'm going to use the buoys for this uh, purpose. Now, I was going to use the buoys to make sure that uh, people have to, like, go on the right side of the face. So I have boats maybe, you know, going on both sides for this face because I'm never going to change it. Uh, and it's very narrow here. So only one boat can come through here at a time. Unless I widen this, I probably will widen this. That doesn't mess with the face all that much. But if I do widen this, I'm going to keep the coastline here because I think the chin... The chin is just part of it. It's got to stay. The chin's got to stay. Just like the head like this has to stay. It just has to. Um, so anyway, we're going to use buoys. So I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm going to create a buoy. And we're going to put one buoy right over like this is fine. We'll put another buoy over here. Two buoys, right? So like a nose, right? He's got a nose now. And then uh, a zit. <laughs> I got a nose. I got a zit on his nose over here too. Anyway, so by doing this, I can then force the boats to have to tag up on these buoys. So I'm going to go over to the list of vehicles. We're going to find the boat right there, and it's again, it's it's selling oil right now. Uh, but what we can do with it is I can tell this boat that it has a tag up. So when you go to the Soviet, after you go to the Soviet border, you then have to tag up on that buoy. And that way you must come here first. Then you will go to the west. And after you come back from the west on this on this way, you will tag up on that buoy. And that's how I'm going to fix the problem. So instead of him going back and forth like that, now he has to come through my republic. The boat has to come through my republic. Okay, so since we're selling, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this happen. So we're going to do the same thing with these boats. Uh, we're going to have them also, because otherwise, as soon as they get over there, they're going to do the same thing, which is great for my wallet, right? That's super good, but it's not in the spirit of the game. So we're going to say the, the Western 
borders right here. Uh, after you go to the west, you will have to tag up on that border or that buoy first. And then after you come from the east, you'll tag up on that buoy. All right, cool. So in, a, in, a, in effect, we kind of made one-way streets there, which is kind of nice. They won't, they won't get in conflict with each other. All right, so we'll copy this route over to this boat. And uh, this is going to be awesome. Now, the one thing I'm confused about here, very confused about, in fact, is that this boat has no fuel. There's no fuel. It's not like, how are you moving? Like, you've got to go refuel yourself. But you notice it's not going to any of these, and it's also not complaining. So I'm a little bit confused about that. I feel like maybe there's something broken in the build. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it. Whatever I have to do to, uh, you know, make it to where it's fair. I want it to be as fair as possible. And uh, I'm not sure that is. Uh, we got people living here. We got 295 people living here. And 295 people living here. That's pretty good. We also have trash building up. Very quickly. Uh, why? Why are my garbage trucks not getting this? It's not, that, it's not out of reach. Garbage trucks? You're, you're right here. Just You're not doing anything. You're just... Are you unable to reach it for some reason? Or this is... This is all gravel now. This is done. You can you can go. Right through here. Uh-huh. This road. And then, you know, this is your this is your garbage right there, so I don't I don't get why they're not moving. They should be picking this up. Unless they're just unable to pick up. No. Um biological waste. Magnetograd dump medium. Oh. I see. I told you to dump biological waste here. But this is for mixed waste after the sorter now. And so you're confused because you're like, hey, wait a minute. I can't. I can't. I see. So they're probably all bad now. Okay. So biological waste. You go here, direct to the incinerator. Now they'll spring to life. And I need to apply that to the other ones too. Because this used to say biological until this completed. And then I needed it to say mixed so this thing would export. And so now I need to switch all the other ones. So uh, good to catch that now before everyone gets sick. Um, got to find all my trash. Let's just... Uh, the sources should, I think, be all the same. So should be able to just go through like... Like these guys are just sitting there doing nothing right now. And I'm betting you they have the same thing. Biological waste, dump medium. Yep. So I need all of these guys. They'll spring to life right now and go get the biological waste. Every single one of them will as soon as I click it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So biological waste is probably building up everywhere. I bet that's making people sick. Uh, I have been losing population. I'm down below 51k now. I was briefly above it. So I'm wondering if we're having deaths because of that. That's possible. This boat is back, right? So it's only going to sit for a little while, but we're definitely making enough steel to handle that. And then let's see if the buoys fixed it, because I'm still selling. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it fixed it. I'm still selling. Hang on, hang on. Tell me I fixed it. Yeah. Uh. Oh, you're at the western borders. Wait, weren't you just? No, no, you've always been at the Western border. It just takes a while to sell it. It just takes a long time to sell it. Got to unload it at a, at a comfortable pace, but that's okay. And then later on, what we're going to want to do, I don't think this is a good idea necessarily right now, because um, I don't think the ratios work for me to do, to do this, but um, we might want to find a situation, and I don't think it exists, where these boats could uh, haul something on the way back as well. Um, and so what I mean by that is we could have, the, you know, so they're not wasting their trip. Think transport fever, right? You don't want empty boats, right? We want them to be able to haul things each way. So what I could do maybe, right, is the uh, oil train 
<laughs> oil train, the oil ship goes from here to here, drops it off, and then it's empty all the way over. Well, what we could do is ship fuel to be over here, and then you could pick up the fuel and you could bring it, you know, to another place that we have over here, right? So like, let's say I have a town over here, which I was planning on doing with the, the planes and everything. Eventually, that town is going to need fuel. The oil ship could take the fuel and bring it down here. So at least it's doing something. And then it goes over here, does the oil thing and back up. And then likewise for our aggregate boats, I can see a very easily a situation where we would want to have it fill up with gravel and take it down over there for development purposes. Right. And, and have, uh, you know, a source of gravel and a source of fuel all the way down at the other end, uh, where we're making other things. And, uh, and then again, we have boats that can take goods and service or goods, uh, from one side of the map to the other, and they're not wasted, uh, cause they're going to the same or they're, they're being productive in both directions. Right. So that's ideally what we would want to do eventually, but we, we're not doing that right now. Right now we're just making money off of it. So I do need to look into the fuel situation though, because I really, I really hope anyway that, um, you know, these boats eventually start getting fuel. Um, cause I don't, I feel like that's a little cheaty too. I, I, I don't have no idea how to do it. I want to, you guys see me, right? I'm willing to like, you know, do things to, to not cheat the game here. Um, but I, I can't, uh, I can't do anything about it. If they don't fuel themselves up and complain, right? Like you should either fuel yourself up or complain, you know, what, do one or the other. The only thing I could think of is that they will refuel themselves when they're over the border. But I'm pretty confident that doesn't happen because that would require them to spend that currency. And it's possible that that currency would be in excess of what they just traded. I mean, it's not because they're big boats, but if you were had small boats, for example, it's theoretically possible for you to spend more on the fuel than it is on what you just exported. So I don't think they would do that, but I, I am going to look at that. If I take a look at the other boat, uh, the other boat is right here and it is at, on its way to the waypoint, which means it has no fuel. <laughs> it has no fuel guys, <laughs> guys. I don't know. It has no fuel, uh, but it is on its way to the waypoint, which is a good sign because Currently, it says the boat is here, <laughs> right? And that's, that's no good. Uh, it definitely needs to be coming up the river somewhere. I need, I need to see it. I need to see my boat coming back to know that this is working. Oh, man. I was, I'm going to keep an eye on this. Let me let this run for a little while to get the trade routes running. I'll be right back. Okay, the buoy seems to have fixed it. Uh, I just watched that ship start from over here on the opposite like of the map. It was highlighted. Just watch that ship go from here all the way across this and then turn. Um, but the ship is now at least coming back down the river where it's supposed to be and it's going to head this direction. So hopefully that happens with the other boats as well. We are now, as you can see above, uh, frame rates are bad because I'm going max speed, but as you can see above, we are spending dollars now. Yes, we are now buying with the dollars, the bauxite. So if I go over here to the economy tab and I take a look at our imports of resources here, we are now bringing in bauxite with dollars and then we will send it to the east. Yeah, it's happening. Look at that sunset. Come on, this game is beautiful. What are you talking about? Look at that. I'm actually not sure if there is a point to separating these boats very well because you can see how long it takes to load the bauxite it takes a long time we might need another one of these ore carriers because i what i didn't factor into my calculations of of, of travel and and trying to like move the resources around and everything i didn't factor in how much time it takes to load 8200 tons of bauxite because proportionate to, well, 850 tons of oil. I mean, assuming they load one ton of all units at the exact same rate, these boats are going to have to be sitting behind the border for 10 times longer, right? <laughs> so, uh, whoopsie on that. Totally didn't factor that into my equations when I bought these ridiculously expensive boats. So there's that happening. 
Uh, on the plus side, though, it's still fine. Like, we just need more of these boats. So as I make more cash, I'll just buy more of these boats. I guess. You know? Because <laughs> it takes a long time to load that. Uh, but in that sense, uh, there's really no point in keeping this boat behind. So I'm going to let it go. Let that boat go, too. 85 tons of mechanical components going up the river there as well for more dollars. And we still have 287 tons in there. So I could probably get another one of these ships or just ditch that ship and say, hey, I could get a bigger one. It's fine. I mean, I don't know. I might I might get a bigger one. We'll see. Uh, yeah, and then the steel boat, that is already on its way out here too. It's probably almost uh, the oil boat is here. So I did fix it. The oil boat is now using the river. Uh, but the other one, and the oil boat will probably use this one more often too. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but steel boat was here. I guess it already made it to the border. Ah, there it is. Yep. It already made it to the border and it's gone. So, um, this might, that might be an idea is having boats that leave, go down this river and boats that arrive, arrive on this river. Right. And they may do it anyway, because this here is closer to that buoy that's over here. Right? I mean, yeah, it's got to hit this buoy. So there's a pretty good chance that all boats that spawn are going to use this side up the river like that and then leave that side. I may need to make this channel wider. Yeah. I think I need a different one. You know? It's just the, the river cargo ship. You know? It's cool and all, but uh, I think it might just be a little too slow for me. A little bit... Uh, you know, we could do more with it, I feel like. Oh, because now I like, are you just going to wait behind this boat the whole time? That sucks. I really hope you don't do that. You can totally pass. Please pass the boat. Please go faster than the river. This thing is basically a little tugboat. So can you please go faster? It's not. It's not. It's going to go eight knots. Nine. Eight. Oh, no. Oh, you're stuck behind the little guy. Well, I mean, hey, whatever. I mean, at the, at the honestly, like, think about it, right? This boat uh, does not at all need to be there because it takes forever to load. So we're just going to have it just keep loading over and over. And then this one will arrive when it arrives. It'll be there when it gets there and it'll start loading too. So yeah, I definitely need more of those boats, but you can see like my money's going back up. Right, we're making money again. We're at four million profit to, uh, in this month, and uh, that's with the purchase of oil, right? And then on top of that, with uh, we're buying something heavy right there, probably electronics. But in either case, we're doing trade, guys. International trade. We're finally there. We're putting our stamp on the world. We're we're showing them what we're made of, or at least what we're making. Nah, not even that. We're not even making it. We're, we're just buying it from somebody and selling it somewhere else. It's great that way. Uranium processing is starting to build. I must have done that on accident because I don't remember saying so. But you know what? Kind of wanted to get going on that soon anyway. Once this, once these guys were built, kind of wanted to get going on that anyway. So sure, uranium processing is up. Wear and tear is already at 2%. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the rest of these buildings going too. I guess this one's already started. Um, I must put, I must have put auto search on somebody cause I don't remember, uh, I don't remember clicking go on those buildings yet, but it's okay. I would like to make more chemicals be before going into uranium and stuff, but the process uranium selling that on the train, it, uh, it will definitely pay for the chemicals. So I, I guess that's not a big deal if we work one or the other. So yeah, does this look okay? From the right angle, it looks pretty legit. There's just like a lot of you know, shadows and stuff, right? From all the ripples. But if you take a look at it from back here, I think it looks okay. Yeah, you know? I feel like that's going to work. And then we just have to pave this road. So I've been looking around the Republic, trying to figure out, you know, like what's going on with people dying? Why are people dying right now? Because I couldn't figure it out. And I still, I honestly still can't, but, uh, the health overlay does show 
uh, pretty much everywhere in the whole Republic, health is pretty consistently above 70%. Most buildings are in the high 80s to low 90%. So they're all pretty good. You know, you have 91s through here, 97, 98, even in a couple. Oh, maybe that's 88, 88, right? 87. So like they're all doing pretty well. There's no real cause for a mass death, but I am seeing over here, we do have a couple buildings that are in the 60s. I would like to kind of get address that. Um, so I'm adding over here, I'm adding a little clinic, just a small one, and then another parking lot right here so I can get more personal cars for these guys because these guys don't really have access to them very well. And uh, I mean, they have these parking lots, but they're kind of shared by all these guys, right? And so uh, I'm just kind of adding another one over here just so something else they can walk to. But it comes off of this road instead of this one just to alleviate any more stress on that if I can. Um, but yeah, like I haven't really seen a real reason for this. Uh, health is pretty good. Uh, the heat and the interiors of all buildings throughout the entire Republic are all slammed at 24 uh, degrees Celsius with the exception of, uh, construction projects are always, uh, locked at 20 C and that's the way the game does it. Anything that's under construction is at 20 C. I'm also expanding Zernoski over here. I don't know if I've shown this before, but I've, uh, Started construction of a couple more houses right here with a little chess park next to it. Seems pretty good. Uh, and then there's a couple of houses over here that are going to have, and they'll have access to these parking lots and stuff. And uh, just again, more people to work in the meat industry. If I can get that running a little bit better, I'd like to, because right now we're just using 100% of the meat we make. If we take a look at our imports, exports, I'm sorry about all the cuts. My, my family's here and uh, yeah, my son keeps inter uh, uh, interrupting me. So if I take a look at imports here, let's pause it really quick so it stops running. So uh, our imports this month are electronics at 21 tons. That's not bad. I mean, honestly, that's that's pretty good. So we're at least able to produce a good amount of electronics now. That's good. Uh, we're still slamming meat pretty much. So 98 tons of meat brought in. Uh, 24 tons of electrical components is pretty tame. Uh, I usually, I was seeing imports as high as 40 to 45 before. So at least we're doing better on that regard. And then for the most part, we're done building rails. So, I mean, that's also going to help too. This rail is completed now. So trains can now, can now loop, uh, very well. The only, the rail that we're still working on is, uh, this side over here, which is all, uh, electrified rail. And then also this right here and the tunnel, which looks like is coming along. Yep. So they're working on the tunnel. Uh, other than that, though, uh, there's no more rail being produced uh, as far as new rail. So we'll then start to work on the existing high uh, value rail areas and start to electrify those. And then once, once we have sufficient amounts of that, then we can um, start pulling the trigger on scrapping our existing old trains and replacing them with some new fancy electric ones, um, especially uh, this route right here. I'd like to replace and make all this electric if possible. There's just a little bit left to go on the tracks. Pretty sure this segment here is all electrified all up this. This whole area is already done, but this area of course is not. And that's fine because this is a fuel station. There's no reason for an electric train to go that way. Uh, I will need to electrify this if I want them to continue using it. Uh, but I will want to probably have this side and see how I'm doing this. It comes in this side and then it comes out this side. And that's because the electric rail is going to go here. So. Uh, we'll basically have this shared to where this will be electrified first, uh, going in and then it'll come out this side and I'll have it just kind of do that. And, uh, yeah, this side here needs all electrification. None of this is done as far as I'm aware. It looks like the outer ones are, I must, well, any new track, again, any new track I've made has been electrified. So, uh, <laughs> the outer ones were the ones I made, uh, for that, all of this is electrified all the way out through here. Whoops. Hey there camera. You can do it. I know. I believe in you. Yep. Right through here. Yep. And then, uh, for the most part, we're ready to rock. Uh, this has, I think this is one side done up to at least this point. Yeah. I didn't go to the station yet. And then this rail is getting close. Uh, all this is not electrified, but it starts to get electrified right here. And that's because of the, the Metro. Uh, it's not the Metro, the, the trams that I'm making, right? I need them to be able to go too. So, uh, there is that, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only update I have for, for all that. I'm not sure again, uh, why people started dying a little bit more. That's a little bit. I, I, I looked around, uh, there's no problems with waste. Not, you know, all the waste systems are perfectly fine. The only parts that are even remotely full are 
near the waste processing centers. Uh, there was a couple over here that were 100% for a little bit, but 100% is not that big of a deal. It doesn't really pollute. Uh, and it's only the biological waste. They have places to put biological waste, so it's not overflowing. Uh, and I just it just means I need to increase how many biological waste bins I have there for uh, people to come and pick up. That's all that really matters. Uh, if I'm taking a look through this, this is all fine. You know, there's no garbage issues. So I, I, yeah, I really don't know what causes it. Um, what's causing it this time? This one here is 101%. That's going to happen a lot because this one here is a very small. But it's also incredibly easy to empty out. A uh, truck can empty the entire thing in one big go. So not a big deal. And it, it, it empties the entire thing in one big go and doesn't fill up. So it's... Yeah. I do wish the these things were smarter, though, because they should not be going to the claw machine right now. He should be going over and picking up something else. There's plenty of mixed waste over here. It should be picking these up. And I, I thought that's how it was supposed to work. But I'm, I'm learning that it isn't how it works. Or at least I'm learning that it, it doesn't look as though that's how it works. Because now this garbage truck is going to go basically empty. Pretty much non-existent load there. And he's going to go and unload it for no reason. He really should have taken the mixed waste from here. The mixed waste from here. And the mixed waste from here. I realize they can't mix and match it. You can't do mixed waste and then also plastic in the same truck. But they should have picked up the, the mixed waste here. And... Um, they're not doing that so that's a little disappointing because that's the whole point of it was <laughs> that was really the entire point of having the different sized vehicles right uh yeah um also this doesn't have any water so i don't think they were dying because of that but i am putting a water system in here so there's a water tower going in here and then there's going to be the water substation there that's going to provide water to that and then uh the water is actually coming from uh, oh they got this pipe done sweet uh, the water, water is coming from over here on this side. And so all the processing for Magnetograd is also providing for the water over on this side, which is good because we're going to have, uh, as you know, we're going to be having buildings and stuff over here too. And then this little thing here might be in range to provide for everything that's on this side of the track. I'm not going to go too far this way because of the heater, but you know, we'll, we'll go about here probably. And this one should be able to reach some of that stuff. And then we have all this over here uh, as well, which... Uh, now that I go, now I'm looking at it, I kind of wish I would have put a switch right here. Still may. Uh, this is a pump, so I can put a switch through there. So I, I probably will put a switch like right here. That way we can at least bring that water this direction too. But regardless, uh, I'd have to tell them to actually build this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Helicopters will take care of that right there. And then also the garbage needs to be taken care of too. Uh, not Zernoski. Don't do that. Uh, cancel construction for Zanoski office. Uh, a construction mode for Magnetograd office. Yes. You guys should be doing these. And this. And this. And this. Yes. Very good. Okay. So, what did we do today? I think we did a whole damn lot. <laughs> we spent a whole lot of money. Uh, we watched the money tick up and down endlessly. We're about to watch it. Uh, the dollars tick down even faster. Uh, and then we'll watch them go up again because the oil ship is on its way too, as well as the uh, mach uh, machine uh, mechanical components and stuff. That's going to happen as well. I still have to figure out the train situation over there. They're still yelling at me. Uh, we had a, an interesting thing happen with the 587 Los, but ultimately it is doing what it does. And I, I really, I think the oil is faster to load. It's not 850 units, right? It's 2770. So I did choose the other boat. Um, I, I still think the oil is faster to load than aggregate. It does appear that way anyway on the map because I'm letting it run all this time. <laughs> and uh, if I go to the list of vehicles, ships, all, if I go to right here, this is the one that's loading right now. Uh, you can see it's, it's not loading fast. This thing's real slow. And I can't do anything about that because that's outside my border right it's, it's just loading at the speed outside my border so we're probably gonna need you know three or four more of these ships which you know if i keep making money every month like i'm doing uh we'll be able to afford it no problem but yeah that's it so uh i really do want to let this run for a little while i really want to get this done because i think next video i would love to start looking at where we need to do what we need to progress with what we need to expand upon to get 
vehicle manufacturing going at least at like maybe even as little as five percent capacity but i want to start producing them because that's when we can start shipping them around the republic getting people to buy them in car dealerships and things like that and i want to talk about how we're going to implement that so that's going to be uh, I don't know if it's going to be next time. I want it to be next time. I'm going to tell you I want it to be next time. But I can't tell you for sure that it'll be next time. But we are so close to just having literally everything except Charlemagne's North and the airport done. And uh, I'm excited to finally show you the design. Because right? all the roads are done with the exception of this. I've left this dirt because I'm not sure if I want this to connect here or not. I haven't made a decision on whether this road should connect here. Or whether it's going to be a turnaround right here so there's a there's a thing i'm working on designing in this area because of the chemical plants being so close i'm not putting homes here but there's parking lots all around here um at least there was i don't know if there will be after i'm done designing it we'll see this area here is like the least designed part of the whole area and then i'm still very tempted to move the heating plant i may i may still do that oh all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Hope you're having a wonderful uh, week. We'll see you. Uh, I don't know. We're probably trying to do at least at least two videos a week for this game. But in case I didn't get it done in time, I hope you had a great week. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye bye.